Check out my newest podcast, Queening Out with Laganja Estranja, where we cover all things All Star 7 and her season six stuff and so much more. So check it out now, wherever you listen to your podcast. Let's hit the time war. Oh, here we go. <laughs> It's episode eight of season six. You are in the comedy stand-up challenge. It led to so many iconic moments. Ganja's in the house, yeah! Was that your full speech or was there more? No, that's definitely edited, which is why I have to like read it because, no, not that I would remember the full speech anyway, but no, it definitely was edited. It was much longer. And um, yeah, you know, look, I'm just really grateful that at the end of the day, as bomb as it was, like, and bad bomb, it eventually became good bomb. Yeah. And I love that people celebrate it now and laugh. And I try to laugh with them because I do think a lot of it was really funny. Yeah. You know, it just didn't happen to land in that moment. Was it as bad as the edit made it out to seem? Or did you get laughs and did you have? Well, I still think the edit was really funny. Um, <laughs> so like when you when you say that, do you mean like the audience not laughing? Yes, yes correct. Yeah, no, that, that still happened. The audience didn't laugh, but I still think it's funny. I'm sorry, dry as it, your vagina is iconic. It was hilarious. I also think the funny thing is that people took the video and then just inserted laughs after everything. I love that because it shows you the power of editing. Of editing, yes. Yeah. How long does it take you or did it take you to write that? Did they give you like a prompt? And like, how did you even decide that? Right. So we were definitely given a prompt. Um, That's where I did my famous underneath the table with the no smoking sign. Um, And I just saw a recent like meme where I'm talking to myself and I'm like, and I need a transition. And they were like, and she did. And I was like, (laughs) oh, that's. Um, But yeah, so I probably worked in the workroom for like two to three hours. And then we had Bruce Valange. Uh, work with us on the on the sketch and he loved me he thought I was so funny and I left feeling so confident wow. but I went into the workroom and I actually lied to all of them and was like I did really bad like I'm so nervous and I think ultimately that's why I set myself up is because like I was trying to play games and girl like you just can't play games like they will end up biting you in the ass and well it did so also um, Polly was on the show too and I remember he worked with us off camera um, and yeah, everyone's like built me up as for it to be this big funny moment. And then it was just crickets. crickets. Oh my gosh. And then you're on the main stage. Yes. It's after the challenge. Yes. And you had your breakdown moment. I did. I felt very attacked. Mm-hmm. Although was I felt very attacked before or after the runway. You when It was re- while the judges were deliberating. Correct. Right. So yeah. it was before I had to lip sync. And yeah, that was such a, a traumatic moment for me. In fact, like I won't watch that. Really? Yeah, I won't watch it. I mean, I've made fun of the I feel very attacked. I've made merch with yeah. it now because I'm always of the belief if you can't beat them, join them. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it was a really hard moment. And I really do still feel to this day that the girls um, came for me. I mean, you know, I, I know Adore was famously saying famous for saying like, well, that's not how I wanted to do it. And I truly believe that at the bottom of my heart. But I just think because so many of them ganged up on me yes. at once. You know, it's one of the very few times I've only had a full on like panic attack. It was very intense, um, you know, and uh, I'm just glad that I survived it and that I have been able to laugh at it. Because at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. And, um, you know, I've learned to just, like I said, go with it. Go with it. You know, everybody has a breakdown moment. Mine just happened to be caught on camera for national TV. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and my breakdown moment was Saturday on Pride. Yeah, um, so you see, one of the same. Well, I would love to know in that moment, and I'm sorry I'm bringing it up, but I no, do have good, a question. Yeah. I would love to know, you said that you were 100% J. Do you mm-hmm. feel the same way looking back at that? I really do. I really do. I've always claimed this, and I, I will to the day I die, because you know I was 23 years old. Mm-hmm. I grew up in musical theater camp. Uh, being over the top at summer camp was what I did best. Yeah. I put on drag shows for people at lunch. I was known as what we call a ham. Always turning it up, always talking, always moving, always grooving. And, you know, I went into that TV show with the advice from Alyssa Edwards, which was keep the cameras on you at all time. Do whatever you have to do to make sure you're stealing the scene. And so that's exactly what I did. Now, if I were to go back to the competition, which I won't, <laughs> but if I was, would I do it differently? I do believe I would. Because I'm a different person now. Yeah. I've grown, I've matured, I've come into my truth. And so I don't think it would be the same, 
But I do think it would be similar because I am still similar. I am still over the top. I am still a ham. I still do turn up for the camera. So uh, I just think it would maybe be a little bit more uh, toned down. Yeah. Because I've learned I don't have to do so many antics to get people's attention. You know, there's a line um, that, oh, why is her name leaving me? There's a line that Jocelyn Fox said to me, and she's like, you demand attention instead of command attention. And that's something that's really stuck with me that I really think about all the time. Um, And uh, yeah, it's something I think I try to do now more. I just try to command the room as opposed to like demand people look at me by being crazy and kooky and zany, you know? That's really smart advice. It is. Yeah, Jocelyn, I'm taking that to heart. Yeah, it's a good one. And before we move on, I do want to know, when you left the room, Uh uh-huh. You said, can somebody find my nail or get my nail? Get my Did you get nail your nail? Fell off. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that question. I would assume so. And if not, I had extras because okay. I, again, think I started this just saying I came with a full case of nails and I had nails for every single look, which mm-hmm. I know now is standard. But back then, I really don't think that was a thing. And so I had extra nails made. So if I didn't get that exact nail, I definitely had an extra to glue on because I was not going to go out there with one nail off. Oh, and then you were the first queen to chasse away. You have to. See? Had to represent for the dance community. But that is such an iconic episode. Looking yeah. back at it, it was so full of so many moments for you. Whether right. they were negative or positive, you had those moments and it made you who you are today. Like at the end of the day, like it helped shape, it helped shape you for the fandom. And then you got to redeem yourself, I guess you would say, when yes. you came back on All Star Six. Rudeem. <laughs> um when you came back for All Star Six. And how did you actually jump down? So um, I, of course, pitched this to the team and said that I wanted to come from the ceiling because I was uh, referencing an incredible, iconic YouTube video by Tandy Amon Dupree. And I wanted to do exactly what she did, which is she fell from the ceiling. But due to liability reasons, they're like, we're not going to do that. So they built a platform for me. And uh, it actually was on the left side. And because I'm a left splitter, I had to have them drill up the platform and move it to the other side, which I felt very (laughs) diva about. But they did it so graciously. And yeah, that's how I did it. I jumped off the platform into my split. There you go. Yeah. Still recovering from that one. <laughs> still still in pain. Yes. Still on CBD uh, topicals. <laughs> At least you're not like the UK girls that always jump on their knees. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. I don't yeah. know why. The knee flop. Yeah, the knee flop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting move. <laughs> well, before we get into this challenge, we're going to exit this time warp. Um. 